problem. And that robot in Black Mirror Metalhead in that episode was pretty terrifying because it was so dog-like. And it was, it was also a damn good robot. And I mean, in real life, do animal-like forms, like the joints and the, and the legs and the feet, does that form make for good robots, do you think, Daniel? Uh, yeah, you know, it's interesting. So if you, if you ask the people that study that, they, like, is it called biomimetics, Chris? Yes. They'll say, no, we don't slavishly copy nature. We try to find the underlying principles of nature. What's, what I find fascinating is the term robotic means to move in this jerky, unnatural way. And it's actually becoming anachronistic because robots are starting to move very fluidly with what I would call natural grace. And so when you watch like a deer leaping through the woods, it's beautiful, right? The human brain recognizes that's natural grace, that's beautiful. And I think what you're really seeing is that this this deer is solving a problem really well. And the problem is how do you move through this really rough terrain? And the answer is evolved right there, it's a deer. And all animals really have this. They, they've all become really great solutions to all these different problems of how do you survive in these different environments. And so now when we start to see robots like Boston Dynamics, uh, quadrupeds that are moving in an animal way, you know, they're moving with fluid, natural grace. What we're really seeing is just that they've started to become very good solution to, the, to this problem of how to locomote. Do you want to add something to that, Chris? Or it makes me think of biomimicry and bioinspiration, right? Remember that we have co-evolved with all these animals. And at some level, our response to animal shapes and animal behavior is burned into our brain. If a robot looks like a snake, you're, most people are already genetically programmed to fear snakes. They're gonna fear that robot. If a robot looks like Bambi, we're gonna like that robot. Another really interesting thing is, it's very hard to imagine something that isn't based on an animal model. If you look at Star Trek, for example, and their space aliens, pretty much all of their space aliens, you can look at that and say, oh, that's a giant lobster. <laughs> or, or, or something like that. It's really hard for people to imagine what would a space alien look like that wasn't based on the yeah. animal forms that we've seen already. The crystalline entity. Okay, yes. And the one that looks like the black tar and all this other stuff. So yes, we know about blobs, but once you start to have arms and legs, they all look like animals.